Hey guys, I'm ready to continue with showing you uh, the commentaries that I'm working on, Revelation, Expositories, and uh, using that book of the four views in Revelation. I was mostly looking for the idealist view, and also I've added from another commentary, but um, this is going to be on chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 1 says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within, and on the back side sealed with seven seals. It says, I saw uh, in the right hand of him. And the right hand is a symbol of God's power and authority. Okay. Um, you know, and I've already mentioned how a throne talks about God's sovereignty. And... So the book, um, the book, I've got two uh, possible explanations. I believe the first one's probably a better one, but I decided for a while, maybe I'll leave the second one up there too, just to, to let people think about this. But the book is uh, the redemptive plan of God, written within and on the backside. All space has been filled and nothing can be added to God's plan. Um... And I don't want to get Calvinistic with it. I don't know if that necessarily gets into that. Uh, maybe I need to think that out a little bit more. But that seems like a good explanation. Or or maybe the book is, you know, just all of, you know, all the events of life and stuff already written down, you know, as if they've already taken place. I don't know. Anyways, the second one is that the, the book is the Lamb's Book of Life, and it's written within and on the back side because there are too many names written to be contained within. So there's some different thoughts there. Uh, maybe maybe both of these miss the mark, uh, and some more thought needs to be put into that. Uh, but those are just some ideas. So Revelation chapter 5 verse 2 says, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? With a loud voice, so that all in heaven and on earth can hear the message. And we see that explained in verse 3. And the question is not who is powerful enough to open the book and loose the seals, but who is worthy. Revelation chapter 5 verse 3 says, And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and read, and to read the book, neither to look thereon. John weeps, because it seems that no one is worthy enough to open the book, and therefore God's plans cannot proceed. Uh, Revelation chapter 5 verse 5 and one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Okay. Um, and so there's a lot that can be said about the mention of Jesus being the lion of the tribe of Judah and of the root of David. It's uh, kind of describing, you know, more of his merits that he is certainly worthy that he is the messiah he is the one that is worthy enough to open the book so only jesus is worthy enough to open the book so a lot more could be said about that a lot more could be said about the seven seals but i'm just going through right now and i'm just giving a little bit through each chapter and then i'm going to go over like in layers and go into more detail and look into more references and stuff so Next is Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And... Um, Let's see. Well, Jesus is the Lamb who was slain, and we read that in John chapter 1, verse 29. John the Baptist basically says that the seven horns can represent omnipotence, 
and seven eyes can uh, represent omniscience. So this is like perfect um, power, complete power, perfect uh, knowledge, you know, all knowledge. So, Revelation chapter 5, 7 through 10, And he came to look, he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayer of, prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof, and thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Now the new song, the new song that is being sung is a song praising God for the redemption of men from every nation. And previously in the last chapter we saw they sung a song praising God for uh, his power in creation. Now I see at the end of Revelation chapter 5 verse 10 where it talks about we shall reign on the earth and I can see people using this for the Millennium Kingdom. In fact, I'm sure that they do, uh, but that's certainly not what it means because there's a whole slew of errors that comes with teaching that literal physical Millennial Kingdom, uh, this futurism stuff, you know, it involves... Um, It involves, you know, the spirit being reunited with the flesh and, uh, you know, a bodily resurrection and all that other stuff that the Bible doesn't teach. So, I see it as this, we shall reign on the earth in a spiritual sense through grace, reigning over sin and corruption, through, sat through Satan being bruised under their feet, and through the victory they have in Christ over the world. Now Revelation chapter or verse chapter five verse eleven through fourteen and I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and to every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth for ever and ever. So, we see that uh, only this kind of praise and worship could be ascribed to deity. And so this is a great proof for the deity of Christ. Okay, they're, they're doing all this to him that's on the throne and to the Lamb, getting down and worshipping him and giving him high praise and and glory and honor to him. Uh, so, you know, without a doubt, you should be able to see that, you know, the Lamb is equal to him that sits on the throne here. You know, so we always need to remember when we're considering the Trinity and stuff that what's at stake is the deity of Christ and the deity of the Holy Spirit, but... Um, you know, there's so many ways in the Bible that, that the deity of Christ can be seen and proved. And people who are against that, they, they want to see like a verse that says, uh, that says, you know, Jesus is God. They want to see that like, and, they're, and they basically think that if you don't have that, then you don't have anything. That's absolutely false because we see all so much evidence. You know, and right here's a perfect example. Revelation's full of it to prove the deity of Christ. You know, how Jesus says uh, in the beginning that he's the Alpha and the Omega, and just all this stuff comparing himself to God and being worshipped over and over again as God. So, you know, that's just absurd. I was thinking how, like, Catholics, they teach that Mary wasn't a sinner, that she never sinned, right? So Catholics can use the same argument. They can be like, show me a verse that says Mary sinned. 
you know, it's got to say that, you know, plain as day, Mary, Mary committed sin, whatever, <laughs> you know, you could prove anything like that, or you could refute anything like that, or whatever, it's not, it's not valid, so, you know, we have to look at the evidence, just because it doesn't say anywhere that Jesus is God, we see it all over scripture, okay, so, <clears throat> I see the Trinity uh, is being true, it's a uh, well- uh, thought out doctrine that's you know irrefutable so that's that much more could be said about seven seals and, and stuff like that and different things so this is just a little bit trying to break it down and and go over it again and again so i'll work on chapter six next god bless